A half a month later, Emma received a call from Aiden saying that her grandmother was dying and wanted to see her for the last time. Chris was already on his way to pick her up. Emma hung up the phone and jumped off the bed. She hurriedly put on a coat and ran downstairs. The noise was so loud that it woke the sleeping Gus. Are you going out now? Where are you going? Gus looked at Emma in confusion. Emma opened the door and said, Grandma Grant is dying. I need to check on her. I'll leave Wendy with you. Gus frowned and finally asked, Do you want me to drive you? No, I'll go myself. Go back to bed, Emma said, and closed the door. Gus stood in the living room for a while, and then went back to his room. When Emma ran out of the villa, Chris's car was already waiting for her outside. Without hesitating, she got into the car. When they arrived at the hospital, Bill Grant and the others stood outside the room with gloomy expressions. Emma waved to them and followed Chris into the room. Aunt Leslie was crying very sadly beside the bed, while Aiden stood with his back facing the outside. Emma could not see the expression on his face. Grandma Grant had lots of tubes inserted into her body, and all kinds of instruments were flashing by the bed. She slept so soundly. Her face was relaxed, as if she was having a sweet dream amongst all this chaos. The day before yesterday, she had been speaking to her normally. But today, she was so tired she couldn't keep her eyes open. Emma's tears slipped out as she took in the scene. Seeing Emma come in, Aunt Leslie sobbed and said, Emma, quickly over here. She's been waiting for you. Aiden turned around and looked at Emma. He was still expressionless. There was a deep sadness in his red eyes. Emma paused for a few seconds and then walked quickly to stand behind Aiden. Grandma, Emma is here. Aiden whispered into Grandma Grant's ear. Grandma Grant, who had closed her eyes, opened them again. She raised her left hand and rolled her eyes. I'm here. Emma reached out and held Grandma Grant's hand. Eh, Emma. Grandma Grant's voice was very soft. Emma's eyes contained tears. I'm here. Aiden? Grandma Grant raised her right hand and called out again. Grandma, I'm here. Aiden quickly reached out and grabbed Grandma Grant's right hand. Grandma has lived a long life. Don't be sad, Grandma Grant said. Grandma. Emma cried so hard that she could not make a sound. Emma, listen to me. Okay, Emma nodded. Grandma Grant held Emma's hand and slowly held Aiden's hand. Grandma has this one final wish. What is it? Emma asked seriously. Grandma Grant smiled and turned to look at Aiden. Aiden, you have to take good care of her. She has worked so hard for you. Grandma, I know. Aiden turned his head to look at Emma. I will take good care of her. Emma, no matter what he did wrong, I hope you can forgive him. Grandma Grant looked at Emma. Emma's face was full of tears. Yes, I will be smiling down on you from heaven. Grandma Grant softly finished her sentence and then closed her eyes. The heart monitor beside the bed began to beep at the same time. The rest of the Grant family heard the sound and ran in. Mom, Grandma. However, no matter how loud they shouted, Grandma Grant would never wake up again. After the time of death was announced, the people of the Grant family left, one by one. Only Aiden stayed by Grandma Grant's side and watched over Grandma Grant, who had recently passed away. He did not move at all. Emma stood behind him and stayed with him. She knew very well how important Grandma Grant was to Aiden. Although Aiden seemed expressionless, Emma knew that he was very sad. The sun rose, 
When the nurse came in and drew the sheet over Grandma Grant's face, Aiden finally moved. What are you doing? Aiden shouted, losing his cool. Sir, it's time, the nurse said gently. Aiden glared at her with his red-rimmed eyes, refusing to let go. The nurse was unintimidated by his appearance. Emma reached out and gently held Aiden's hand. Aiden, it's time. Grandma Grant wouldn't want you to behave this way. He seemed to have heard Emma's words. Aiden still looked devastated as the nurse began to wheel the old woman toward the morgue. Aiden watched in silence. He suddenly freed himself from Emma's hand and ran out of the room. Emma chased after him in shock. After Aiden left the room, he had left the hospital. Emma left the hospital in a hurry and chased after him. She was soon left far behind by Aiden, who ran much faster. The sky was gray. Large patches of dark clouds hung overhead, and soon it began to rain. The rain was getting heavier and heavier. There were fewer and fewer pedestrians around them. Even cars were passing by at a much slower rate. Neither of them knew how much time had passed. When Emma was almost unable to keep going, Aiden's footsteps gradually slowed down. Finally, he stopped at the side of the road. Emma panted as she slowly walked over. She traveled to Aiden's side and stood side by side with him. Aiden turned his gaze to her. When he saw Emma standing beside him, he almost thought it was an illusion. Why had she followed him? Emma, why are you here? I was worried about you. <gasps> Emma suddenly sneezed. Only then did Aiden notice that Emma's outfit was nearly soaked through. She'd left home in a hurry and hadn't dressed for the weather. He took off his jacket to pass it to her, but his own jacket was already soaked. He paused for a moment. He still put the coat on Emma. Put this on first. Emma immediately refused. No, you should wear it. Please, Aiden grimaced, his tone unimpeachable. Emma looked at him, then lowered her head and tugged it over her clothes. Aiden looked around and found they'd come very far from the hospital. He frowned and looked around for a taxi. There was nothing. The rain had stopped, but the cold wind blew through his clothes, making him look even colder. Emma's body trembled, and she shrank back into her clothes. Aiden suddenly reached out and grabbed her hand and then walked her toward the street behind them. Emma looked confused, but she did not pull away from his hand. Aiden dragged Emma to a nearby hotel on the street. Although it wasn't very big, it looked clean. Sir, can I help you? The young lady at the counter looked at Emma, who was soaking wet and looked a little uncomfortable. Aiden noticed. He held her hand tightly and aimed his sharp gaze at the young lady behind the counter. The lady at the counter was intimidated by Aiden's gaze and immediately retracted her look. Ma'am, could I trouble you for two suites? All right, those rooms are around $1,500 a night, but there is only one available. The young worker's voice was trembling. Aiden turned around and looked at Emma. He took out a wallet from his pocket took out a card from the middle, and handed it to her. Please give us the room. The lady at the counter said carefully, I, I need an ID, sir? Aiden handed the ID to her without hesitation. The receptionist's fingers trembled as she quickly registered and handed the ID and room card to Aiden. She wanted to get him out of her lobby as soon as possible. Sir, I have you in room 1688. The elevator is on your right. Aiden took the room card and his ID back expressionlessly. He then led Emma into the elevator. After entering the room, Aiden turned on the heater before sending Emma into the bathroom. Hurry up and take a shower. Don't catch a cold. Emma looked hesitantly at Aiden, who was, who was drenched all over. You go first. I'm fine. You go in quickly. Aiden pushed her into the bathroom. Emma paused for a few seconds, 
and closed the bathroom door. After Emma entered the bathroom, Aiden walked to the sofa and sat down. He raised his head unintentionally and looked in the direction of the bathroom. He could hear the shower switch on from inside, and then he noticed a tiny glass cut out in the wall by the shower that gave him a line of sight into the bathroom. He stood up and walked to the window. He opened the window and breathed in the cold air for a while. Then he took out his phone and ordered room service. Emma, who came back out wearing a bathrobe, left the bathroom with the fan running. Aiden was standing in front of the window and making a call. His voice was soft, and she could not hear what he was saying. She was afraid of interrupting, so she turned around and took the blow dryer back to the bathroom. After blowing her hair dry, Emma put it back into the holster and used the bathroom's comb to comb through her hair. Emma then walked out quietly. Aiden was still on the phone. He frowned and seemed dissatisfied. This time, the sound was louder. Emma could tell from the conversation that Aiden was talking to Chris. She immediately stopped in her tracks. I don't care what they do. Send two sets of clean clothes to the Jade Hotel. After saying that, Aiden hung up the phone. Aiden stared at the landing window for a while in silence. He turned around and saw Emma standing at the bathroom door without moving. He frowned. What are you standing over there for? Emma wanted to ask Aiden what made him lose his temper. She thought about it and did not ask. She moved over and sat on the sofa. Go and take a shower. Aiden hesitated. Then he nodded and took two steps toward her. He turned his back to Emma and said, I called room service. It should arrive shortly. So he called to order food earlier. Okay, she said, nodding. Not long after Aiden entered the bathroom, there was a knock on the door. Emma walked to the door and saw through the peephole that it was a hotel staff member. The man rolled in a cart with a few different options on it. Emma led him to the table, and he left the tray behind. How much is it? It's spilled to the room, ma'am, the other party replied respectfully. Oh, thank you, Emma thanked him and watched as he let himself out. After putting the food on the table, Emma leaned on the sofa and looked toward the bathroom door. Then she saw the glass portal by the shower. In other words, Aiden could have seen her in the shower. Emma's face turned so red that it almost exploded. She squealed from embarrassment and wished that she could find a hole to hide inside. What are you doing? Aiden left the bathroom and saw Emma blushing. He immediately walked over and caught her hand. Emma raised her eyes and saw Aiden looking down at her. She was instantly lost in his eyes. When Aiden's hair was still dripping on Emma's face, she came back to her senses and pulled her hand out in a panic. Why didn't you blow dry your hair? Emma stood up and went to the bathroom to get the blow dryer. You really ought to get dry, Emma muttered as she used the hair dryer to help Aiden dry his hair. Aiden did not speak. He quietly felt a slight sense of comfort when her fingers swiped through his hair. This was one of the happiest moments of his life. After his hair was dry, Emma took the dryer back into the bathroom. When she returned, Aiden had already sat down. Let's eat, he said, looking up at her. It was late at night, and she had not eaten anything. Emma was also hungry. She nodded and sat across from Aiden, eating quietly. After the meal, Emma got up to clean. Aiden originally wanted to help, but he accidentally caught a glimpse of Emma. Because when she bent down to clean up the tea table, a large section of her bathrobe moved, and her skin was faintly visible. He immediately put down his hands and got up. His actions were so sudden that even Emma gave him a strange look. However, when she saw that he was only standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling window, and there was nothing unusual, she continued to clean up. After tidying up, Emma and Aiden sat down on the sofa and watched television, waiting for Chris to bring over clean clothes. After a while, Emma felt a little drowsy. Aiden turned his head to look at her and said softly, 
get some sleep. Emma half narrowed her eyes and shook her head. I'm fine. You haven't rested since last night. Go to sleep. I'll just sit on the sofa and take a nap. Quickly, go to sleep. Aiden got up and closed the curtains of the window to block the light outside. He then leaned back on the sofa. Emma stood up and bit her lower lip. She said in a low voice, The bed is big enough. We could both... They could share it. But Emma could not bring herself to say that out loud. She clearly meant for them to sleep together. But Aiden's heart was racing. Okay. After hearing Aiden's assent, Emma quickly looked away with a beet red face. She removed the blanket, crawled inside, and lay down. She covered her face with the blanket. Her face was still burning. His footsteps were very hesitant. He stepped on the thick carpet, and there was no sound. However, Emma still felt his approach. When he stopped by the bed, she almost felt all the blood pulsating. Her fingertips also tightly squeezed the bedding. Then she felt the blanket being removed. Aiden went to bed and lay down behind her. It seemed that he was really exhausted. After Aiden laid down, he did not move again. It was dark inside the room. Only the soft sound of the city outside carried into the room. Emma was obviously exhausted, but she couldn't bring herself to close her eyes. Maybe it was because the bed was too cold, or maybe it was because of the man behind her. Not long after, a faint moaning sound came from behind her. Grandma. Aiden's voice was very soft. It sounded like he was talking in his sleep. It was filled with deep sadness. Aiden had held on to his composure until the nurse had come to push away his grandmother's At every other time, he had remained very calm. This time, Emma felt his pain. Emma subconsciously turned around and saw Aiden trembling. A slightly muffled cry came from the blanket. Emma reached out and patted Aiden's back gently to comfort him. Aiden kept whining, and his body trembled more and more violently. Emma could not help but wrap her arms around his waist from behind and quietly accompany his grief. Her hug made him stiffen for a moment. Then he turned around and buried himself into her arms like a spoiled child. Emma hugged him tighter and gently caressed his back. Gradually, Aiden quieted down. Very quickly, his breathing was steady, and long as he fell asleep. Emma lowered her head and looked at Aiden in her arms. She touched his face with heartache and hesitated for a few seconds before closing her eyes. Fatigue came quickly, and she quickly fell asleep. Aiden was woken up by the sound of his ringtone. He opened his eyes blankly and saw Emma's sleeping face. He was stunned for a few seconds before he noticed that he was sleeping in Emma's arms. She was warm and familiar. It took him a few seconds to react. She had comforted him through his bad dreams. The phone rang again. Finally, Aiden came back to his senses. He reached out to pick up the phone from the bedside table and picked it up. The call was from Chris. He had brought the clothes and was outside the door. Aiden carefully pulled himself out of Emma's arms and covered her up with the blanket. He then got up and opened the door. Chris stood outside the door with a few bags in his hands. When he saw that Aiden was only wrapped in a towel when he opened the door, his eyes flashed. Mr. Grant, these are the clothes and the car keys you asked for? Aiden expressionlessly took the bags and keys from his hands, turned around and was about to close the door. However, he was stopped by Chris. Mr. Grant? Aiden did not turn around 
but coldly spat out a word. Speak. Chris looked at Aiden's back and swallowed his saliva. Then he said, The Grant family intends to bury Grandma Grant in the New Haven Cemetery. Mr. Bill Grant didn't want to hold a big ceremony, so the burial is the day after tomorrow. After saying this, Chris lowered his head and waited for Aiden's fury. However, Aiden said nothing. He slowly walked into the room and put the bag in his hand on the sofa. Then he turned around and went back to the bathroom. Just as Chris was guessing what Mr. Grant was doing, Aiden walked out of the bathroom with two bags in his hands. He walked straight to the door of the room and handed them to Chris. Take these clothes and have them cleaned, then go back to the company and wait for me. Yes, sir. After Chris left, Aiden closed the door and walked to the bed. Perhaps it was because of the cold. Emma curled up on the bed and slept soundly. After standing silently for a few seconds, Aiden removed the blanket and went back to bed. He held her in his arms with pain in his chest. Perhaps it was because his body was very warm, so Emma automatically went into Aiden's arms. Staring at Emma's sleeping face, Aiden's eyes were filled with deep affection. In his arms was the woman he loved the most, and in his arms was the person he wanted the most. He knew that she already had someone else, and that she was already someone else's wife. However, he could not help but love her. He even took advantage of her sleeping to secretly watch over her. He could only endure it. He suppressed his emotions and gently tugged her robe to better cover her. Then he got off the bed and went to the bathroom to take a cold shower. After coming out of the bathroom, he changed his clothes and quietly sat by the bed to watch over her. Only when she was about to wake did he walk to the window and silently look outside. Emma opened her eyes and did not see Aiden in bed with her. She thought that Aiden had run away again, so she quickly sat up. She looked around the room and found that Aiden was dressed neatly in front of the window. Only then did her uneasy heart calm down. You're awake. Aiden turned his head to look at her. Yes. Emma took off her blanket and got off the bed. Emma seemed to have realized something was wrong. She lowered her head and hurriedly tidied up her robe. Her face instantly turned red. Aiden lowered his eyes and walked to the sofa. He picked up the bag containing clothes for Emma and handed it to her. Chris brought over a change of clothes. Emma nodded and reached out to take the clothes. I'm going to get changed. Emma's ear suddenly felt hot, and her face was dyed red. She hurriedly escaped from Aiden's gaze and ran to the bathroom. He watched her go, and couldn't help but watch her embarrassment, like a lion watching a mouse. Aiden, you idiot! How could you let her find out? Do you want her to run away? While Aiden was feeling annoyed with himself... Emma was in the bathroom, staring down her own reflection. Under her pajamas, on her chest, there was a bright purple mark. She had showered last night. So this... She blushed, opened the bag, and took out the clothes from inside. They were all brand new. After getting dressed, Emma walked out of the washroom with her head down. When Emma walked out... Aiden was no longer standing in front of the window. Instead, he was sitting on the sofa and talking on the phone. His sitting posture was very elegant. He held the phone in one hand, and his fingertips drummed rhythmically on the arm of the sofa. Emma did not walk over, but stood quietly at the bathroom door, her gaze quietly washing over him. After Aiden made the call, he looked up at Emma there was no change in his expression, as if nothing had happened just now. Emma pinched the tip of her finger, then pulled the corner of her mouth away and said, away and said It's getting late. I should go. It was getting late. It was already afternoon. 
Aiden looked out of the window in a daze. After a long while, he replied, Okay. Then he got up and added, I'll take you. Emma did not react when Aiden said he would send her off. Where did he get a car? When Aiden picked up a set of keys from the coffee table, Emma cursed herself for being an idiot. When Chris brought the clothes over, he must have left the car keys for Aiden. She lowered her head and followed him out of the room. After they left the hotel, they went straight to the parking lot and got into the car that Chris had left behind. They drove in silence until they arrived back at the villa. When Emma was about to get out of the car, Aiden suddenly stopped her. Emma. Emma's heart jumped. She turned her head and looked at him. What? What did he want to say to her? Aiden stared at her face for a few seconds before he said, Your clothes have been washed. I will have Chris bring them back to you. Emma did not expect Aiden to stop her. He was telling her about the clothes. The expression on her face froze instantly. At the same time, her mood had sunk to the bottom. After a few seconds, she forced the corner of her mouth open and said, Okay. Aiden lowered his eyes and nodded. Emma turned her head and said as calmly as she could, Then I will go in first. Okay. The word entered Emma's ears, and tears flowed down her face. She quickly opened the car door and got out of the car and walked toward the villa. Aiden frowned and looked away from her. He stepped on the accelerator, and the car sped away from the villa. Emma heard the sound of the car starting. She stopped and looked back. She could only see Aiden's car disappearing into the distance. Emma could not hold it anymore. She squatted down and started crying at the door of the villa. The bodyguard who was guarding the door of the villa was scared for her and hurriedly ran into the villa to report. Gus walked out and saw Emma squatting there, crying until her heart was broken. He watched Aiden's car from inside the villa, so he had been waiting inside. He did not expect her to cry so sadly as soon as Aiden's car left. Gus frowned and walked over to help her up. (laughs) Emma cried in Gus's arms. Gus knitted his brows and reached out to hug her. He patted her back gently and comforted her. The only person she cried about from beginning to end was Aiden. However, he could only comfort her in silence. After crying for a long time, Emma finally noticed that she was sobbing in Gus's arms. She let go of Gus somewhat awkwardly and then stood there with her face lowered in embarrassment. Gus put his hands in his pockets, then turned around and walked toward the garage. I'm going to pick up Wendy now. Emma looked up at Gus's back and then followed him with an embarrassed look. That... I'll go. Gus's footsteps stopped. He turned his head to look at her and said lightly, You go inside and rest. With that, he strode into the garage, pulled out the Lamborghini, sat in it, started the car, and left. After watching Gus leave, Emma lowered her head in frustration. Why had she cried in front of Gus? And she cried so pitifully. Her image of being a strong elder sister was really ruined. Emma did not know that since she and Aiden separated five years ago, Gus knew she spent most of her nights crying. That was why her so-called heroic name had been destroyed five years ago. Two days later, in the New Haven Cemetery, was Grandma Grant's funeral. Because it was kept out of the papers, not many people attended the funeral. Other than the Grant family, there were only a few close people acquaintances from the Grant household. Although Aiden's attitude last time had broken Emma's heart, she still attended Grandma Grant's funeral. She wore a small black suit. Her face was pale, and her eyes were scarlet. This time, she did not stand beside Aiden, but stood alone at the back of the group. Aiden and the people of the Grant family stood up front. 
After a brief ceremony, the coffin was slowly lowered. The coffin drifted below the dirt as dirt was sprinkled on the coffin and roses were thrown over the top. The guests began to trickle out. Only Aiden was left standing in front of the gray and cold stone epitaph. He looked at the stone tablet. Grandma Grant's kind picture was smiling at him. Emma bit her lower lip and hesitated for a few minutes before walking over. She took a chrysanthemum in her hand and placed it in front of the tombstone. Quietly, she looked at the picture of Grandma Grant for a long time before turning around. When she turned around, she saw Aiden's expressionless face. She didn't want to talk to him about what had transpired in the hotel room that day. Emma turned around and quickly left, leaving Aiden with a determined view of her back. She really had run far away. Aiden raised his eyebrows and looked at Emma as she ran away from him. His eyes were full of sadness and regret. Emma walked out of the graveyard. She had just walked out to the parking lot when a voice suddenly called after her. Emma? Emma turned around and saw Peter standing not far behind her. He seemed to be waiting for her there. There were many cigarette butts at his feet. Peter, what's the matter? Peter looked at her for a few seconds and then threw the cigarette butt on the ground. Are you free for a quick chat? I don't have anything to talk about with you. Emma turned around and prepared to leave. Peter walked over quickly and blocked Emma's way. Emma, New Haven is full of our memories. Don't be so heartless. New Haven, Connecticut was indeed full of Emma and Peter's memories. Back then, Emma went to university here, and Peter was a manager of the engineering department established by Grants in New Haven. Peter had met Emma by chance and then quickly pursued her. Half a year later, they had started dating. At that time, whenever Emma did not have class, Peter would go to the school to pick her up. There were many places in New Haven full of their memories. When Aiden got into a car accident, Peter was transferred back to the headquarters of Grants to replace Aiden. Peter had gotten busier. Usually, Emma would go to the city to look for him. Later on, when she was not hired by the local hospital, they moved away and they visited less and less. Until the day Emma found out that Peter and Alicia were sleeping together. They had arranged to come to New Haven to see her wedding dress. After they officially broke up, the two of them never returned. Today, Peter was actually bringing up their past again. Emma snapped back to him. She smiled mockingly and asked coldly, So? Emma, can't we start over again? We could still start again from New Haven. We... Before Peter could finish his sentence, a voice suddenly came. You guys have no chance to start over again. As soon as the voice faded, Emma was pulled back by a huge force and threw herself into the other party's arms. A familiar, cold aura. Emma's heart quivered. She looked up and saw Aiden's grimace of anger. Why was he so angry? Aiden's entire body emitted a cold and terrifying aura. His eyes were like ice as they shot toward Peter. He actually came to protect Emma. Originally, he had planned to quietly follow behind her and watch her leave safely. He had not expected Emma to be stopped by Peter at the exit to the cemetery. He originally thought that Emma could handle this matter herself, so he had been hiding not far away. He did not expect Peter to actually invite Emma to start over again. Did he want to start over with her? Was he that shameless? Aiden instantly became angry. Without thinking, he said, You guys don't have a chance to start over again. Then he captured Emma in his arms. Even if he couldn't have a second chance, why should Peter? When Peter saw Aiden, he was shocked at first. When he looked at Aiden's cold and cold eyes, no matter how hard he tried to pretend to be calm, he was still furious. Both Peter and Aiden 
were too arrogant to just let this pass. Aiden, this has nothing to do with you. Peter knew very well that Aiden and Emma had not forgiven each other yet, which was why he said this. He did not know that these words were simply poking the bear. Aiden was originally in a bad mood because of Grandma Grant's death. Adding the fact that his relationship with Emma had entered a stalemate, Peter drove open his wounds. It was like stepping on a landmine. Emma saw Aiden's entire body fill with an unconcealable murderous aura and fury. Before Emma could react, Aiden's fist fiercely swung toward Peter's handsome face. She only heard Peter's cry of pain, and then he held his face from Aiden's swift punch. When Aiden raised his fist again, Emma reacted and stopped his hand. Aiden struggled and wanted to beat his brother's face in. But Emma hugged him with all her might and said to Peter, who was standing there stupidly, What are you even still doing here? Do you still want to fight? Peter looked at Emma and then quickly ran toward the parking lot on the right with his injured face in his hands. After Peter drove away, Aiden snorted coldly and put his hand down. He turned around and looked at Emma. Thinking that Aiden wanted her to let go, Emma quickly let go of his arm. Aiden saw her reaction and his eyes darkened. Did she still care about Peter? So what if he hit Peter? She was desperate enough to hold him back. Did she really just let him go? Meanwhile, her heart was in so much pain that she couldn't breathe. He knew that his status was not as intimidating as Gus's, and he had never thought of competing with others. But he thought he could at least defend her honor from Peter. Boundless sadness bloomed in Aiden's heart. He tightened his jaw, turned around stiffly, and walked towards the parking lot. Emma saw Aiden turn his gaze away and leave without saying a word. She thought he did not want to see her. Her heart hurt watching him storm away. She wanted to ask him, If you never seem to be able to stand the sight of me, why are you always helping me? In the end, she never asked. She just said to Aiden's back, Why? Aiden's footsteps stopped in an instant, but he did not turn his head. Emma bit her lower lip and smiled brightly as she looked at Aiden's back. Thank you for what you did just now. There was a self-deprecating smile on her face. She wanted to thank him for stopping Peter from harassing her. Emma was worried that Aiden would get impatient. She hurriedly said, Take care of yourself. Grandma Grant would hate seeing you so sad. As she spoke, Emma felt extremely sad, and her heart was also greatly stifled. She knew that she should say goodbye, so she turned around and left as cleanly as he had left yesterday. However, she couldn't help but hesitate. She tightly bit the corner of her lips and softly said, Then I should go. Okay. Aiden looked ahead in a daze. He did not dare to turn back, afraid that he would question her later. Why had she taken Peter's side? Emma stared at his back for a long time before turning around and walking out very slowly. She tried her best to slow down her pace. She wanted to stay as long as possible, but no matter how slow she was, it was only a few dozen meters from here to her car. The tip of her nose was red, and her footsteps were also very hesitant. Eventually, she just sprinted off to the car. Aiden suddenly turned around and looked behind him, for some reason, he actually saw the sorrow in the slump of her shoulders. Why was she sad? He had always wanted to love her, and he never wanted her to be sad. Was it because he hit Peter? Aiden stood there quietly and looked after her. At this moment, a car drove in from the exit. Because the car was too fast and Emma suddenly ran, he hadn't seen her coming. The driver reacted quickly and turned the steering wheel to try to go around her. However, the car still raced toward Emma. Emma! Aiden opened his eyes wide and called for her, running in her direction. 
Emma panicked when she saw the car rushing toward her. Then she heard someone calling her name. The voice was so familiar. She turned around and saw Aiden running toward her. She wanted to retreat and stop Aiden from coming, but she seemed frozen in place. She could not move. Seeing that the car was getting closer and closer to Emma, Aiden rushed toward her. After coming into contact with her, he wrapped his arms around her waist and grabbed her tight. Then the two of them fell heavily onto the cement. The car slid past them and finally crashed into a car in the parking lot. The two cars slid a few feet before stopping. Then the parked car alarm started wailing. Hearing the loud sound, Aiden finally recovered from his shock. He lowered his head and looked at Emma in his arms. He heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately, she seemed fine. He raised his sore hand and picked Emma up. Emma, are you okay? However, Emma still looked at him blankly and did not react. Seeing that Emma wasn't reacting, Aiden nervously checked her over. Emma, are you in pain? Emma stared blankly at the person in front of her. Just now, a car was rushing toward her. She thought she was going to die. However, someone pushed her down and allowed her to avoid this disaster. Who was this person in front of her? Emma's eyes began to focus slowly. At the same time, she also recognized this familiar, handsome face in front of her. She stared at this anxious man in front of her in disbelief, checking if he was injured. Then she asked foolishly, Aiden, is that you? Yes, I'm here. Aiden looked up and answered almost reflexively. After he answered, he realized that she was calling Aiden. She asked, is that you? He replied, yes, I'm here. She felt Aiden check her over from top to bottom. Slowly, all of her consciousness returned to her. When the car drove toward her, he called for her and ran toward her. Then he ignored the car that was about to hit them and pushed her to the ground. If he hadn't been so close, the car would have run over her. He'd saved her life. Emma's heart was instantly filled with inexplicable emotions, gratitude, regret, and everything in between. Her fingers trembled as she gripped Aiden's sleeve. She asked, why did you do that? Don't you know how dangerous that was? At the end of her question, Emma sobbed. That car could have killed you. Emma started to lose control of her emotions as she cried. She started to scold Aiden. What if it hit you too? Are you an idiot? Listening to Emma's scolding, Aiden's heart felt warm. He happily reached out and hugged Emma close, hugging the treasure that he had almost lost. Emma tightly hugged back the man who ran over to save her. She cried loudly. Aiden patted her back and comforted her. When Emma and Aiden were hugging each other sweetly, a voice came from the side at the wrong time. Sorry, excuse me. Is there something the matter? Aiden's cold eyes shot toward the other party. Aiden's gaze was like a knife. The driver was sweating profusely when he saw Aiden's blade-like look. He had come to apologize. Was this necessary? I I'm sorry about what happened just now. Do you need me to call an ambulance? The driver asked carefully. To be honest, if this man had not suddenly pushed the woman out of the way, he would have really knocked her down. Of course, more importantly, he almost killed both of them. Thinking about the danger at that time, he was still scared. Is there any use in apologizing? Aiden's tone was not welcoming. If he had not gotten Emma out of the way, the two of them would have been dead meat. Uh, uh I... The driver felt speechless as Aiden glared at him. Emma squeezed Aiden's hand. Assuming she was unwell, Aiden asked, Is there something wrong? We should get you to the hospital. No, I'm fine. Emma shook her head and said to the anxious driver, You go. Be more careful when you drive next time. Yes, I'm, I'm so sorry. 
the driver apologized to them again and again. Aiden looked at Emma and finally waved at the driver impatiently, indicating for him to leave. Of course, there was a good reason why he could let her go so easily. Firstly, Emma was fine. Secondly, the car accident allowed the two of them to get closer again. After the driver left, Emma was embarrassed, so she let go of Aiden. At the same time, she also noticed that Aiden's hands were very badly scratched. The blood was actually staining his red sleeves. He was wearing a thicker coat. When Emma fell, his wrists and the back of his hands were scratched. Why didn't you say earlier that you were injured? Quickly, let's go get this taken care of. Emma's worry was clear. It's okay. It's just a scratch. Aiden stared at her face and said softly, It's okay. You're okay. Emma's emotions collapsed when she heard Aiden's words. She hit Aiden on the shoulder and scolded him. You know that I'm okay. Why did you say that you were fine? Are you stupid? Take better care of yourself. She wanted to wrangle his neck, but couldn't bear to harm him. She hugged him close and scolded him while crying. That was so dangerous. What if something really happened to you? Why did you come today? Aiden asked. What if something happened to you? What if something happened? Aiden stared at the small woman who was crying and scolding him in front of him. If we can't live together, it's good that we could at least die together. After Emma had cried enough and scolded enough, she wiped her tears. She was going to pull Aiden's hand when she suddenly remembered that his hand was injured. She carefully held his arm and said, Let's go to the hospital. Aiden looked down at Emma's worried face and said softly, We don't need to go to the hospital. I'll just put some medicine on it. I'll be fine. Give me your keys. Emma angrily glared at him. How could Aiden dare argue with her about this? Aiden raised his eyebrows and looked at her with surprise. Emma rolled her eyes. She had never driven a car before because there was a driver at home to pick her up. But that did not mean that she did not know how to drive a car. When she lived in Canada, she drove to work every day. <laughs> 